I think we should probably get started here. Um, so I will figure out how to turn my screen share on and uh, get rolling here. Is that pop up for everybody? I guess Mo Molly can talk. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thanks for everybody for joining us today. Uh, our, our topic for for the day is VR and immersive technology in education. So uh, we're going to kind of cover this at a really high level. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to uh, reach out in the chat uh, or ask to uh, uh, ask some questions on video as well. Uh, that'd be really nice for us uh, as presenters, um, and uh, we'd be happy to answer those. So. My name is Travis Holliam from REM5 Virtual Reality Laboratory. I'm one of the co-founders here, and I lead our education initiative. Uh, and joining me today, uh, Molly Rosen was nice enough to uh, join from St. Louis Park, so you can introduce yourself, Molly. Uh, Molly Rosen. I'm a social studies teacher at St. Louis Park Middle School. And I'll, we'll, we'll touch on uh, why Molly is uh, significant in uh, virtual reality and uh, what we're doing in education. but. Uh, uh, has been really in, uh, involved in bringing this to literally hundreds of, hundreds of kids uh, at St. Louis Park. So we'll cover that here in just a minute. Um, first things first, I wanted to just cover kind of what, who REM5 is and what we're all about. Um, so we're Minnesota's largest lo location-based virtual reality company. Um, like any good startup, I don't have any facts to back that up, but I'm going to make that claim. So, uh, <laughs> um, but I think, but I think that really is true. Uh, and we've had uh, about 20,000 people through the doors here, uh, including a few thousand students. So um, we're located in St. Louis Park, like I said, uh, and our mission is really to make immersive technology and virtual reality specifically accessible to consumers, businesses, and educators. Um, so one of the barriers to entry in the virtual reality space for a long time has been cost and space, and we're trying to break those down. We've got a 6,000 square foot space behind me, uh, with a dozen high-end headsets uh, that you can come in and uh, experience VR for fun, uh, for entertainment during the day, and then we do a lot of work with businesses as well. So that's that's really what we're all about, and that I'll I'll talk about why that uh, is important in the education space. So what do we do? Uh, our kind of core is education or entertainment. Sorry, um, and what we like to say is we trick people to come in here with beer and pizza. And uh, then we get to talk to them about all kinds of other things like training, culture and emotional intelligence and education. Ironically, Molly and I met first at a happy hour that we hosted uh, here at REM5. So that gets to, you know, kind of um, getting people in the door uh, with something like happy hour has been really key because then we can talk about and open eyes to, hey, this is how we would actually use this in, in an educational setting. Um, the training, cultural and emotional intelligence, uh, we actually have another uh, presentation going on at three o'clock if you want to join that one. So uh, feel free to pop in with that with my co-founder, Amir. Uh, but today we're going to talk about the education side of things, uh, what we've done, where we're going, and sort of what the opportunities are uh, in education with VR. So first, um, I'll cover this at a really, really high level. Um, but when we say immersive technology, really what we mean is taking yourself and putting yourself in um, in another space. So virtual reality, you're able to put yourself in a fully digital space and change the entire world, world around you. Augmented reality, uh, kind of a half halfway digital. So think something like Pokemon Go, uh, even Snapchat filters uh, are considered augmented reality. So that's another thing that's kind of um, growing in the space. Uh, I think probably later today, we'll hear Apple talk about augmented reality. Um, so that's, that's a really interesting and, and growing space um, and sort of halfway between full virtual reality and reality itself. Mixed reality is kind of a confusing term. What we talk about uh, when we say mixed reality is, is mixing something in the physical world. So we have a hockey stick trainer. We're doing um, some law enforcement training in virtual reality. So you're taking something physically that you're touching um, and then there's a digital representation of that in the virtual world. Uh, 180 and 360 video is really just a live shot video that then you're able to uh, experience uh, later. So we, you know, a tour of the White House is a great example where you know we've had hundreds of kids go through that, and you know they're sitting at a table next to Barack Obama or Michelle Obama. Um, so that's a really powerful experience. And then WebXR is another one that we're working a lot on. So that's a uh, digital space that you can access through a browser 
or through a virtual reality headset, basically trying to get uh, find find a way to for people to meet uh, that isn't necessarily in a Zoom call or a, or a happen meeting. So we we really think about in the education space, we're here to enable um, VR and, and uh, immersive technology use in education. Um, and and I wanted to start with the first things that we're we're learning um, a lot about this space. We spent the last couple of years learning where there's pull in education. Um, if you're a founder, you'll understand that um, finding a place where you, can, where you can find pull in the market is really important because that's where the most value is. Um, and then one of the keys to that is figuring out what the language is uh, for our offering. So um, even just using words like field trips, and camps, things that people understand, people people with kids understand, teachers understand, administrators understand, uh, is really important. So even if we're doing something completely different from what they've done in the past, uh, using those sort of similar frameworks has, has been really key to just start that conversation. So um, so the three solutions we're gonna talk about today are, are kind of the biggest uh, pieces of our education business. That's field trips. Um, I'll have Molly talk to you, talk about that a little bit, but that's Bite-sized learning experiences is the, way, is the way that I like to think about it. So it's, it's a two-hour experience typically coming here uh, or has traditionally been coming here um, and having anywhere from, you know, a class of 10 students to hundreds of students coming through over a course, a course of a few days and going through a planned uh, educational experience with, with planned content uh, using VR and, and or uh, 360 video or augmented reality. Camps is really that field trip but now expand that out to three to five days and, and even extend, extend the time. So typically those are two to three hours. So now we're really diving with both feet into virtual reality. And uh, we had a couple of camps uh, over the summer that I'll highlight, um, but a, not only a ton of fun, uh, but kids get really, uh, really into all the experiences and you can kind of see where their interest lies. So if we have a dozen students in here, uh, we can we can really help those students dive into the piece of con pieces of content and uh, you know they're in their um, areas of interest and then in school solutions so that's kind of um, what we've been focusing on over the last few months but really trying to take what we're doing here at round five and then bring it to the school so for 2020 uh, not a lot of field trips are happening so we've had to think about how do we bring this technology to schools whether that's us coming ourselves, uh, which we've done in some cases, or enable teachers and administrators to uh, bring this technology into the school. So first thing is VR field trips. Um, and this is sort of, every one of these is a little bit different, um, but the way that we like to think about it is, is the first, first and foremost, we wanna introduce kids and even teachers to virtual reality. So we spend about 10 to 15 minutes talking about what is the difference between different headsets. When I say VR, what do I mean? When I say 360 video, what do I mean? So that kids can start to understand uh, some of the terminology and when a new device comes out, they can be more educated in, in what that exactly means. So for instance, later this week, uh, Oculus is probably going to release a, a new headset. So what is the difference between that headset and the headset that, that is being discontinued? Um, so we kind of talk, talk through those things. And then we explore anywhere from two to four pieces of educational content. And what we've really done is tried to take really great content and frame it as educational content. So um, ironically in the VR space, the challenge is always content itself. Uh, and a lot of the content that's built specifically for education isn't necessarily very high content, high quality content, um, but there is a ton of high quality content that is actually very educational. So. If you want to do a, a, a moonwalk um, from Apollo 11, we can do that. Um, so that's the kind of thing that we're kind of reframing um, pieces of content that were maybe built for a different purpose um, as, as educational. And we'll, uh, Molly can talk about that a little bit, the, the piece of content that um, she really grabbed onto uh, when, we, when we met at happy hour. So um, the great thing about VR is it's highly engaging for everyone. And this is one of the things that is always uh, really great to see with teachers. So we'll have, you know, a, a class of fourth graders walk in the door and, and the teacher will go, oh, man, it's been a really tough morning. Uh, I don't know how this is gonna go. Um, you know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm having trouble with a couple of students. 
and it's like, okay, let us let us get things going here. Uh, give us 15 to 20 minutes to kind of get everybody situated and into headsets. And then, you know, when they really get going in the content, you couldn't tell the difference between the kids who are the most, you know, well behaved before they left the school and the kids who are maybe causing some problems before they left the school because everybody's in what they're doing. And uh, the way that I like to frame it is that you're really meeting kids where you, where they are. So they go home and they're playing video games. So you might be um, doing a tour of a white of the White House, but you're in a headset that is that is often framed as a video game headset. So kids are kids are just really um, engaged in that in sort of a unique way. Um, and then for uh, once COVID hit, we've really tried to reframe those field trips as uh, something that we could bring to school. So um, now uh, Molly can talk a little bit about um, her experience. So she uh, organized, I think, I want to say one of the biggest uh, VR field trips in the world. So uh, we can we can start with what you guys did with uh, with your St. Louis Park trip. So thank you, Travis. So last year when I first met Travis at REM5, I'd never been there. I really had no experience with virtual reality. I knew what it did. Um, and I had played around with Google Earth on the computer in the classroom, but Travis said, you need to try it in virtual reality. So he put me in the, in the headset and he dropped me into the Earth um, through Google Earth VR. And it was pretty amazing to be able to fly over the Earth, fly down to my house, look at my house, look at the school. And I knew that we had a content or a unit on Africa coming up. And so I thought, well, I've always wanted to go to Africa and here's my chance. So I flew over to Africa, flew over several of the countries in Africa. And one of the units specifically, or one of the areas specifically we were studying was uh, the Kakuma refugee camp. Our students in eighth grade were doing an interdisciplinary unit with science and they were building solar suitcases through the We Share Solar program and the suitcases were gonna go to the refugee camp. So I flew over the refugee camp and at that moment, I actually saw for the first time where the camp was. I'd seen pictures of the camp. I'd seen videos of the camp on the computer. But at that moment to actually see the camp um, through virtual reality and to see where the camp was located in Kenya, the size of the camp, and then to be able to actually step into the camp through virtual reality, just it just kind of blew my mind for a moment. And so all I could think was, how, how can I convey this moment, what I just experienced to the students? And so I started talking to Travis and he said, well, let's bring the students here. We can, we can do a field trip. And I said, well, we have 385 eighth graders. And he said, we can do it. So over the course of three and a half days, we brought all 385 students with their teachers to uh, the laboratory. And they got a chance to, through Google Earth VR, through the headsets, visit Kakuma refugee camp, fly over it, see the size of it themselves. And then through the uh, 360 goggles, they actually got to step into the camps themselves and see what it was like to live in the camp, attend school at the refugee camp themselves. And it was just, it just completely changed how we presented the curriculum because it's one thing to watch a video, one thing to read about it. But then when you step into the actual uh, place that you're reading about, place that you're learning about, it changes it. And then the students really understood why they were building solar suitcases to send to the camp to be used in the schools. You know, so much more, especially those 360 videos uh, mm -hmm. that we did, it was, it's so much more emotional. Um, I know that one of them was uh, a camera that was following, um, following people as they were getting their bags of food for the week. Um, and you sort of see what that's like. And then you know, sitting in a classroom, which looks nothing like uh, a U.S. classroom, you have, you know, kids stacked next to each other in this very small room. Um, but what was, what was really amazing was they were all so excited to be there, so mm -hmm. excited to be learning. Um, and so to be able to, to you know, like, you, like you said, drop yourself uh, into those places is really where the power comes. And the other thing, um, and I'll just say this, this is something I've seen, is like when you're doing virtual reality, whether it's a 360 video or, or a full VR headset, you can't be doing anything else. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, nobody's on their phone. Uh, nobody's, we've actually caught a couple of kids with AirPods in, um, but, <laughs> but there's, uh, you know, it, you're, you're literally immersed in the learning experience. Um, so that's 
just such a such a change from uh, you know trying to teach on whether it's a 2D screen, whether it's you know a video uh, or through images. Um, so hopefully, you know what we're trying to do is is frame this as augmenting the things that you're doing in school. Like this isn't uh, Molly's class. We're not replacing anything we're doing. We're we're trying we're we're trying to say here's a concept that that you know I, our, our initial discussions were. I'm having a hard time figuring out how to how to portray what this refugee camp is like, where it is, how far people are walking to get there, and it was like this is this is doing that in a in a whole new way. So, um, and then you got some you got some data out of this. So, uh, so we wanted to kind of go through a little bit of that. Um, but the solar suitcase program. Um, asked a few questions of the students um, and the feedback was was really positive. Yeah, they, I mean, the students overwhelmingly, uh, the question was, you know, do you, did you like the field trip that when you went to uh, REM5 and overwhelmingly the students um, said yes. Uh, just a, a couple of students, I think it was like about three or four said no. And, you know, I'm sure if we were to go back and look and say who said no, those would be those kids that, you know, usually don't like to go to school, but still went. And it goes back to what Travis was saying about those students. I had some doubts about some of our students who are some of our troublemakers at school. And again, you couldn't tell who those kids were. Um, I think only two of our students missed the field trip that week, and it was because they were out sick. And so every single one of our eighth graders um, participated. Um, but overwhelmingly, I mean, they they understood the point of um, of it. They it said that they augmented their learning of it and they understood more of what we were talking about in the classroom once they saw it in reality uh, or virtual reality. Yeah, and the 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 really cool framing with this um, field trip in particular was there was a purpose for what we were doing, um, mm -hmm. and with the solar suitcases, so those were being built here um, by the students or assembled by the students. Um, and then they were going to Africa, but now you're really framing uh, exactly what those, what the, what the impact um, of those uh, solar suitcases are. So um, that's what this last question is, is a little, little bit about. Um, but that was, a, you know, a great kind of full circle tie um, to the field trip. And we even had the solar suitcase team here um, seeing exactly what the field trip was going to look like uh, before it happened as well. So, so that was really great. Um, the, another thing that I, do, that I don't think, um, I covered on a previous slide was, like you said, this is an interdisciplinary project between um, social studies and, and science. Um, one of the programs that we uh, that we had kids go through or have the option to go through uh, as they were sort of exploring how VR can be used in science is a program called Nanome. Uh, and over the last few months, Nanome, Nanome has actually been really important in visualizing uh, COVID-19 and treatments for COVID-19. So um, that's been a really interesting sort of tie back to something that we learned, you know, the, this field trip was in November. Um, well, suddenly in March and April, this is a tool that literally companies are using to create solutions for a global pan pandemic. So, um, so now we have, you know, almost 400 eighth graders in St. Louis Park who, who know the tools that like pharmaceutical companies are using um, to, to uh, you know, to treat this pandemic, so uh, so that's a that's a really great tie as well. Um, all right, so the next thing next thing I want to talk about was camps. Um, and camps you can kind of think of as field trips, uh, just a kind of a, a longer duration and a deeper dive. So with Molly's field trip, we had about two hours with each of those kids, um, and that was a logistical challenge just getting two hours. Um, now we can do you know three hours five days a week. Um, and so this is really kind of the next the next step. So our two camps that we did this summer are VR, entertainment, and beyond. So overview of all things VR over five days, uh, VR, augmented reality. Um, we were able to create things in VR uh, and then pull them into augmented reality. So you have an app on your phone that you can now look at uh, an object that you created in VR. Um, and then design and creation uh, is another one using this, literally the same tools that the professionals are using. Um, so programs like Gravity Sketch that are being used by Ford and Bugatti to design cars. Um, I can teach an eight, nine, 10 year old those, those same programs. Um, and so that, you know, you talk about unlocking kids' interests. You, you tell them that, hey, this, 
this new Bugatti that's coming out was designed in VR and you can learn the same program. Um, that's a hook, you know, that's, that's, that's something that they can really uh, get excited about. Um, and then we're, we're doing some really interesting and innovative things in that space, trying to push the, the envelope of content uh, that we're using. So the image that we have here uh, is actually one of the students at our um, design and creation camp created a bunch of characters uh, in a program called Google Block. We then pulled that into uh, into another program where you can create a video and a VR your own VR experience in VR. So you're pulling in these three D objects, um, just like a game designer would, um, that you created in VR, and then creating a video yourself and animating it yourself uh, in VR. So kind of that full spectrum of of content creation. So then and then at the end of it, you have this output um, that's really unique and fully your own your own creation um, and like I said you know the, the great tie here is that these are tools that are used by professionals and oftentimes one of the one of the unique views that we have here at REM5 is that we're having conversations with educators and we're having conversations with companies who are going hey there's something here with VR but we don't you know we, we don't know which tools to use we don't know what you know the value is going to be for us or our clients um, and so we'll have engineering firms in here having, you know, high level meetings about a hundred million dollar project. And then we'll have, you know, this, a, a group of students or campers who come in here and use those same pieces of content um, and are, you know, are, are basically building those skills that are going to be the next generation of, of engineers or, or game developers or, or what have you. So that's a really that's a really great tie for us. Um, so the the, uh, the next level of this for summer camp for us, and this is really a COVID related um, challenge, is uh, right now um, parents are looking for things for their kids to do after school. Um, I know Molly and I were talking about her schedule, and you know schedules in in every city is a little bit different, but with St. Louis Park here you know, in school two days, off a day, and then doing distance learning for two days. Um, so there's an opportunity there that both, you know, we're trying to fill and then also St. Louis Park's uh, community ed program uh, is trying to fill as well and say, you know, what are, what are kids doing after two, three o'clock when school is over? Well, one of the things that we can do is have them come to camp do these, you know, educational experiences that are virtual reality related. So now they're really excited about learning things or, or accidentally learning things. So um, this is what we're going to be launching over the next uh, week or so. But, uh, you know, a six week camp one day a week for about two hours. And you, you're going to explore space, history, art, nature, science and sports. So uh, really get a really good high level overview of virtual reality um, and some really educational experiences as well. And then the uh, the final thing, uh, really the next step for us is taking all the things that we've talked about. So what we've learned from all these field trips and you know the conversations that we've had with Molly uh, and other teachers, what we've done at camps, and then trying to make that accessible for schools at the school. Um, so we're fully aware that in 10 years, uh, it probably isn't gonna make sense for, for Molly to be doing a field trip here. What's gonna make sense for her is is say either take your VR headset out of your bag and let's do this piece of content, or you know let's get a, a cart um, of VR headsets, um, you know like maybe like iPads and and uh, you know MacBooks and Chromebooks and things like that uh, have been in the last few years. Maybe we're not one to one with VR headsets, um, but they're accessible in the school. And you say, okay, we're going to do a 20 minute piece of content um, that's going to augment what we're doing in the classroom, uh, and so that that's kind of the next step there. Um, and what we're, what we're able to do is take everything that we've learned, not only working with teachers, but looking at content. So we've explored, I'd say over a thousand pieces of content here. And so when we have a conversation with the school district about um, what kind of content would make sense in VR, that's that knowledge base that we have. If they were to go to try to do that themselves, um, they're starting from scratch with, you know, literally a world of, of content options. Um, and so if we can put those things together uh, in a very usable way with the right content, the right tools, like 
uh, multi-user classes and event hosting platforms. Um, now we're really able to um, you know, provide a valuable tool, especially for something like distance learning, where now uh, a teacher can present to students virtually, they can be sitting in a classroom, uh, or you can explore you know, a, a new environment that we've created for, uh, for that class, um, all from home. So that's really kind of the next step. Um, we're very early in that process. Um, and, and really the tools are, are improving every day uh, as far as that goes as well. There's now management tools where um, we can launch somebody remotely into a piece of content. So now rather than not knowing what your kids are doing, what kids are doing on a Zoom call, I can actually, you know, say, okay, now we're going to go into um, the White House tour and I can, I can hit a button and launch kids remotely into that. Um, so that's a really great, that's a really great solution. And I think it's going to be really the future um, is. Uh, as, as headsets get more accessible and um, content gets better and teachers and administrators start to learn um, how this is going to be a tool that we're going to use. That's the other thing we have to sort of, we're in VR every day, um, but we have to sort of remind ourselves that like literally the first thing that we're doing when we have kids in here or teachers in here is introducing them to VR for the first time. This is not something that everybody's done. We're still only at about two to 3% penetration of people even trying VR. So, uh, so that's really the first step where we're, you know, in the first year of the iPad being available. Um, we're not even at the point where, um, you know, where schools are thinking about buying these themselves in, in um, large quantities. So, uh, so, you know, starting to build those tools and have those conversations uh, and getting people to think about uh, how they could, you know, use this as a, as a tool on a regular basis is really, is really the next step for us. And here's just a few images of uh, one of the platforms that we we have used. Uh, but you can um, you, you can actually give presentations in VR, pull in assets, so 3D assets, video assets. In the bottom center, there's a, a, a 360 video that we created um, of the mural in Minneapolis. Uh, so um, a lot of really great options there, um, and making those uh, making those available to teachers is uh is really what we're about here at round five uh and then letting letting the teachers figure out how it works best for them you know um in my conversations with molly were not here's what you should do <laughs> it's really about like here's 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 a bunch let me show you a bunch of stuff and then you tell me what what really sparks something in your mind um because because when you're when when teachers get excited about this and in the learning opportunities that it that it enables for students. That's really where there's a lot of value. So, uh, anything else you want to add there, Molly? Before I uh, before I wrap things up? No, not at all. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to um, ask us on the chat there, or uh, or pop in on video as well. All right. Well, I think that uh, about hits our time. So, thanks everybody for joining. And uh, we'll see you in the rest of Twin City Startup Week. Thanks. Thanks, Molly. Thank you. I'll talk to you later.